Hey there, Louis Yacobelis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft's digital whiteboard in Microsoft Teams. Now there's a few different ways that you can use Microsoft Whiteboard in Microsoft Teams. You can use Microsoft Whiteboard in a Microsoft Teams meeting to allow your participants to whiteboard or sketch out ideas or brainstorming. And you can also use Microsoft Whiteboard in the channel of a team. Okay, so you can actually add to that app as a tab. This way team members have a space to kind of generate ideas, sketch out concepts freely. And the last way that we're going to look at using Microsoft Whiteboard is through its standalone desktop application. And specifically, we're going to look at a nifty little feature in that app that allows you to export the content on a whiteboard to one of your Microsoft Teams. So we're gonna go ahead and get started by looking at how to use Microsoft Whiteboard in a Microsoft Teams meeting. Let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so you can see that I'm in a Microsoft Teams meeting with one other participant. Now, when you're in a meeting, there are a few different ways that you can access Microsoft Whiteboard. The first way that you can access it is to click on the share content button. Okay, and if you scroll down to the share content tray, you'll notice that there is an icon here for Microsoft Whiteboard. Clicking on this is actually going to open the Whiteboard app in the context of your meeting. Okay, now what you'll notice when accessing Microsoft Whiteboard in this manner is that you're actually projecting your whiteboard to the meeting participants. Okay, so this is almost as if you're sharing your screen with the virtual whiteboard. They'll be able to see what you see and they'll be able to contribute uh, content to this whiteboard. Now, how do you actually use the whiteboard application? Uh, well, in terms of the controls, it's fairly simple. Okay, to contribute content, you can click on any of these pen icons. This will actually allow you to annotate or draw on this whiteboard. If you have a touchscreen device, uh, then you can use your finger or a stylus. And if you do not have a touchscreen device, then you can easily just contribute content by drawing with your mouse here. Okay, um, now the next option on the whiteboard control is the eraser. Okay, so you can easily erase content just by clicking down on your mouse and dragging over where your content is. And next, you can also add text to a whiteboard by clicking on the add text button. Okay, so this is going to bring up a text box and you can just type in your content. Okay, now one of the cool features as well is that you can actually again change the color of your font and a handy little tip for this is if you have multiple people contributing to a whiteboard, uh, you can assign individuals different color text to help easily identify who is contributing that content. Now if you want to delete text, you can just click on the text box and click on the delete button and that's going to delete this content. And the last control or option in terms of contributing to Microsoft Whiteboard is the sticky note feature, which is awesome. To add a sticky note, all you need to do is click on this add note button, and this is going to bring up your sticky note here and clicking into it is going to allow you to type in your content. Now this is a great tool for conducting things like brainstorming or even voting, okay? Uh, and as with the text box, while you're contributing content to your sticky note, if you want to change the color of the sticky note, you can just click on the background color picker and you can change the color. Similarly, if you want to delete a sticky note, you can just click on the delete button and it is going to remove it as well. Uh, to rearrange content, you can just click on an element and drag it around, okay? Uh, and if you scroll out with your mouse wheel, again, you can enlarge or shrink or zoom in and out on the Microsoft Whiteboard app. Now the next thing that I'll quickly review is the settings icon. So clicking on this little gear is going to bring up the settings menu. And you'll notice that their settings are actually fairly limited. So there isn't a whole lot that you can configure in this specific app. Uh, for starters, if you do want to export an image, you know, take a snapshot of the whiteboard content, you can do that by clicking on export image. This is going to allow you to save this whiteboard as a PNG file so that you can incorporate it in something like a PowerPoint or some other documentation. And the next option here in terms of settings is the ability to restrict meeting participants from editing. So by default, this is on. If perhaps you just want to contribute and have people follow along, then you toggle this off and participants will no longer be able to contribute. Um, that's pretty much it in terms of the settings for using Microsoft Whiteboard in a Teams meeting. Now there's a few other notes. 
Uh, the first is you're going to notice this open in app button uh, throughout this tutorial. Now clicking on this is actually going to give you the option to take this whiteboard and open it in the Microsoft Whiteboard desktop application. Now that application is available for download for free in the Windows Store. So if you don't have it installed, you can click on get the Windows app and you'll be able to download it. Uh, or if you already have it installed, clicking on the open app button is going to open that whiteboard and bring the content that you've added from this whiteboard into the desktop application. Now I'm gonna look at that in a little bit in this tutorial. The next note that I wanted to make when using Microsoft Whiteboard in the context of a Teams meeting, if you are recording your screen, it's important to note that the whiteboard will not be included in the meeting recording. Okay, so as you can see in this section, it's almost as if I'm sharing my screen projecting this whiteboard. When you go back and look at the meeting recording, this is not going to be displayed. Uh, and the rationale for that is you'll have access to this whiteboard indefinitely. Okay, so there's no need for it to be displayed in the recording. Now what that means is that once this meeting ends, you'll always be able to go back and view that whiteboard content unless somebody actively goes in and clears out the whiteboard. Now, this is just the first way to access Microsoft Whiteboard in a Microsoft Teams meeting. Let's go ahead and let's look at another way that you can access the Microsoft Whiteboard app while in a Microsoft Teams meeting. All right, now the next way that you can access Microsoft Whiteboard in a Microsoft Teams meeting is through the actual Teams desktop application. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Stop Presenting to end this current Whiteboard session, and then I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my meeting window, okay? And now I'm gonna come back into my Microsoft Teams desktop application and click on the Chat button. Now, if you weren't already aware, every meeting in Microsoft Teams has its own chat record. So you can see here, team meeting. This is the meeting that I was just in and that I'm currently in. And every chat record has tabs, okay? So the chat tab is where you'll actually see the chat that is occurring in your meeting. Files tabs is where you can access files shared in your meeting. And you'll notice here that the last tab is a whiteboard tab, okay? So clicking on this is going to bring up the same whiteboard that we were just accessing in the actual meeting window. Okay, and you can see here now that it's loaded, we have the exact same content that we were just looking at. Now what you'll notice is the controls in this view of the whiteboard in this meeting are identical to the view that we were just looking at. Okay, so to annotate, it's exactly the same. You can add sticky notes, erase in exactly the same manner. You'll also notice that the settings are identical to the settings that we just looked at. So there really isn't any uh, difference between working in the meeting window or coming back into the Microsoft Teams application, just a matter of personal preference, okay? Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to show you how to actually open this whiteboard in the Microsoft Whiteboard standalone desktop application, okay? Now to do that, you wanna go ahead and click on open in app. Okay, and in this case, I already have the Microsoft Whiteboard desktop application installed, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on open the app. Now you'll notice that once I clicked on open the app, the Microsoft Whiteboard desktop application window opens and you can see here the same content from the Whiteboard view that we were looking at in our Microsoft Teams meeting. Now the first thing that I'm going to show you is how to view who's currently contributing on this whiteboard. And again, because it's in the context of a meeting, what you would expect to see are the participants that are currently in your meeting. So you can see here, my colleague Diego, who is in the meeting with me, is also on this whiteboard. If you wanted to invite somebody to collaborate, you could do that by clicking on the add a participant button, okay? Now the next thing that I'll show you is the settings menu. Okay, now clicking on the settings menu, right off the bat, you can see here that there's a ton of additional features um, over and above the settings that you had access to when accessing Microsoft Whiteboard in the meeting. Okay, so you can format the background, you can change the toolbar location, you can click on send an email summary, you can export, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm not gonna go through each of these settings in detail, but what I am going to highlight is this awesome feature that is called Post to Teams, 
okay? Now what this does is if you were working in the Microsoft Whiteboard application, perhaps outside of a meeting, uh, either individually or with some collaborators, uh, what you could do is you could actually share this whiteboard in one of the channels of a team that you're a member of. So you can see here, um, my two teams are listed and I can easily click into this channel and share this in the actual team itself. Now, full disclosure, uh, in my testing of this feature, it has worked sporadically. I've actually looked through the Microsoft forums and it seems to be a known issue. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna try to share this whiteboard with this particular channel. Okay, clicking on the channel is going to bring up this option here and I'm gonna go ahead and click on post. And you are going to see that there is going to be an error message thrown here. Okay, uh, now I am curious if you're watching this video and you test this out uh, and you're able to get it working, please let me know. I'm curious to find out if you did anything special to help bypass this error, okay? Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you with the Microsoft Whiteboard desktop application is the actual toolbar. So you'll again notice that there are more options here on this toolbar uh, versus the one that we were looking at in the actual meeting window and in the Microsoft Teams desktop application. Now clicking on the pen icon is going to bring up the ink bar. Okay, so again, you can see here you have access to some additional uh, tools to annotate. Okay, you have some additional colors in terms of your pens. You have access to a highlighter if you wanted to actually highlight text. Uh, but one of my favorite features here is this ruler, which can be used to actually draw straight lines on your whiteboard. Now to do that, you just want to add the ruler to your canvas and then you want to run your mouse along the ruler and you can see here that it is going to draw a straight line. Pretty handy, okay? Now, if you are using a touchscreen device uh, to actually change the angle, you can do it by using two fingers. It's very intuitive. It is a bit finicky if you're not using a touchscreen device, okay? So the best way to uh, change the angle is to click on the ruler and to use the actual scroll wheel on your mouse, okay? And that's going to allow you to adjust the angle Okay, otherwise this is a pretty cool feature. Um, another cool feature is the lasso select. So this allows you to basically uh, group select multiple objects in case you wanted to bulk delete items. Now, the other feature that I really like when using the Microsoft Whiteboard desktop application is the ability to use out of the box templates. Okay, so what you wanna to do to see these templates is to click on insert menu. Uh, and what this is going to do is this is going to actually allow you to add some predefined elements. So for example, clicking on list preview is going to allow me to use an out of the box templated list. Okay, so you can actually, uh, for example, just put in tasks here, type uh, enter and continue to add items and contributors can actually go ahead and vote on these. So this is a very, very powerful capability in this tool. Okay, uh, and if you wanted to access some additional templates, what you want to do is click on the insert menu and click on the template preview. And you can see here that Microsoft has been gracious enough to include some pretty awesome templates right out of the box. Okay, so for example, if you were trying to con conduct or facilitate a remote brainstorming session and you click on this brainstorming template, this is going to give you this awesome uh, brainstorming template right here that you can use to generate that. So it's a pretty powerful tool. It's a pretty awesome uh, capabilities that Microsoft has included. Uh, and this is really all I'm going to cover in terms of how to use the Microsoft Whiteboard desktop application. All right, now I'm gonna show you one more way that you can access Microsoft Whiteboard in Microsoft Teams. Now, this last way that you can access Microsoft Whiteboard in Microsoft Teams is actually independent of a meeting. Okay, so essentially what that means is you can actually access or use the whiteboard feature without having to be in a meeting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is in my Microsoft Teams desktop application, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my Teams icon here. Okay, and I'm going to click into one of the channels of the Teams that I'm a member of. Okay, and I'm gonna come up to the add a tab button and click on that. And I am going to click on whiteboard. So you can actually add Microsoft Whiteboard as a tab in a channel of a team that you're a member of, okay? So clicking on this is going to bring up the add a tab screen here, okay? And you wanna give your whiteboard a name. I'm just going to leave this as whiteboard and I'm going to choose not to post 
to the channel about this tab and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And there you go, you can see that this whiteboard has been added as a tab in this channel. Now this is a really handy feature for having a space to freely collaborate on, to again, sketch out ideas or brainstorm. And so again, accessing the whiteboard in this manner doesn't require that you're actually in a meeting, okay? So this is here indefinitely as uh, a key element of this particular channel. Now, when you're accessing the whiteboard as a tab in a channel, it functions the exact same as when you're using it in a meeting. So it looks exactly the same. There really is nothing uh, distinct about this. Now, one other note is there are some restrictions generally with private channels. So you can see that I've added it to my general channel, which is a standard channel. And I also have a private channel here called manager channel. So I'm gonna click into this. And just for demonstration purposes, if I click on the add a tab, button here, you can see that I'm also able to add the whiteboard to private channels. So there isn't currently any restriction on accessing the whiteboard in a private channel, which is always nice. Now that's it. Uh, this was just a quick tutorial showing you how to access Microsoft Whiteboard in a bunch of different ways in Microsoft Teams. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it. Please drop a comment below. And most importantly, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorial. I'm Louis Yacobelis. Thanks for stopping by.